What's up everyone? Today I want to show you guys a project that I'm so happy I finally finished. Um, I'm very happy with how it came out and everything about it. So this is a project that I've had in mind. I've wanted to do it for quite a while and I just have never been able to. So I finally pulled it off and I want to show you guys what I've done. So let's get to it. I'll show you what I've done. Okay, here we go. This is the project that I've been working on for the last few weeks. Now, it obviously is no longer a mower. Um, there's no longer a mower deck on this, and that's okay. The reason that is, is I got this mower very cheap, and the only caveat was the deck was basically ruined. Well, I bought it and decided, well, it's going to cost me almost a thousand dollars just to put that deck back underneath there to mow grass and we've already got mowers so i wanted to build something unique something a little bit more useful <laughs> for around the yard for whatever you need to do so what i did is built a front end loader off of a toro ss 4235 now that was a 42 inch mower and obviously, like I said, it does not mow anymore. It'll tear up your grass if you want it to, but it's not gonna cut it. Um, so what I did to do this was I basically bought a bunch of steel. Uh, I bought some actuators and I threw it all together. Now that's it, that's all I need to show you. I'm not gonna do that. So. The reason I'm not gonna do that is a lot of other people have built things similar to this. Um, there's one guy that he's, I believe he's trying to sell it to the manufacturers, but you can't buy it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post my plans. Um, anyone can download these plans. I do ask that, hey, if you, if you can, if you're gonna use them, maybe donate. I'll throw my PayPal in the description here just so you can maybe give me a kickback. Um, I do know this is kind of a niche thing that not everyone's going to really care about and not everyone's going to be able to really build something like this. Um, each one of these cylinders here on this mower can lift about 2,000 pounds. Um, so let me go ahead and show you how it works and then if you want to stick around in the end I'll talk a little bit more about how it's all built and how it's put together. A little bit more in depth um, because like I said when I was researching on how to build this, I didn't have much to go off of. So a lot of this was just me figuring it out. So let's see what we can do with this guy.
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the walk around, kind of film this really quick while it's here, uh, explaining what I did and how I did it here. Now, this bucket, um, I could have built my own bucket. Now, the reason I didn't is I wanted something that was ready to go. I could just use it, modify it a little bit, and make it work. So this is a Titan bucket for, it's actually for a Toro Dingo. Now, one of my constraints on this design was I didn't want to modify the bucket in a way that would render it useless for a dingo. Um, my thought on that was, hey, if I blow the engine on this or if I bend the frame or bend it in half, whatever happens, um, I can at least sell the bucket and get some money back out of it. The bucket was very expensive in my opinion. Um, it's one of the most expensive, actually I think it is the most expensive component on this um, being that it was $400 on Amazon and with tax ended up being about $435. Um, but I have a really nice bucket. It's deep. Um, this is, I believe this was 26 or 24 inches deep from the front edge to the back of the bucket. Um, and it's it got a really nice cutting edge on the front as well. So it, it really does perform quite well. Some of the other videos I watched where people built these, they just, I don't know. Their buckets were functional, but you could tell some of them were bending here in the middle. And I don't have to worry about that with this bucket. Uh, there's no way that these actuators that I have will ever be able to bend or damage this bucket just because that's overbuilt. Um, as for the actuators, since I went ahead and mentioned those, these are not really hydraulic, but they are electric over hydraulic. So there's a DC motor, 12 volt motor on top, and this is actually a valve body and a reservoir full of hydraulic fluid. Um, so the reason that matters is in order to have a hydraulic cylinder, you have to have a reservoir and a pump. So that's what this is. This is the motor pump and assembly all in one. And all I had to do was wire it in um, to a positive and negative connection. Now, the interesting thing with that is that they do have to run reverse polarity uh, in order to make it rise or lower. So that was something interesting that I had to come up with. Um, some people, when they use things like this, they will, or even linear actuators, which is just a sole electric version of this, they're a lot slower. Um, these will move at about, I think it's 15 millimeters per second, um, or about a half inch per second. Not per second, I'm sorry, per minute. <laughs> um, no, it's per second. I don't know why I'm second guessing myself. Too many things have happened, too many numbers have been run, and this is just, I'm happy it's done. Um, anyway, there's three of those. Now those guys are not that cheap. Um, unfortunately, they are about, I, I paid about $200 per cylinder. So you've got almost $600 in cylinders just to start out. Um, you go $600 on that, you go $400 on that, you're already $1,000 into this project. Um, it's not cheap, but it's still, this whole thing still is cheaper than a dingo. Um, the steel here is inch and a half by two and a half and it is three sixteenths wall. All of these plates, this is a four by four plate. This was a six by six plate here. Um, they were also three sixteenths wall. This base plate here is three and a half by three and a half. Again, three sixteenths wall. Um, and you'll see all that stuff in the uh, plan files and the models. That way you can inspect it and maybe adjust things because you might have to adjust this, this length here. It may not work for your mower. Um, you might have to adjust how this mounts here, different things. Um, so that, that's, that's pretty much, pretty much it. Um, don't judge my welds. This is really the first manufacturing project I've ever had. And I was using a stick welder, so they came out okay. It's definitely strong enough. Um, I haven't had anything fail on me yet, so I've already used this quite a bit. Um, so going to the electrical side of things, uh, I have both of these um, vertical or upright cylinders. That's what I'm gonna refer to them as. Um, these uprights are wired together. So I have them spliced in the middle here and then it's running down 
to these are like trailer connectors um the reason i did that was i wanted to still be able to completely remove this um the entire assembly will actually come off if i unplug both of these and on the back side of these hitch pins there's just a clip you pull the clips off and you can pull these off and you can literally just raise this off of the mower um you don't have to take it off but it would be that easy uh, these are the only two connections going to the frame now in order to control everything on top of that actually before I move on i got these specifically because i wanted to be able to cap them so i can put the cap on it and you can see it's covered up it's weather tight whatever um and it's easy to mount it so in order to supply those they do take 12 volts now I did mention you have to reverse the polarity on these in order to get them to go up or down. So if I go up, I can then go down, but what's happening is the positive is switching from the red wire to the black wire basically and running the motor in the opposite direction. Now, in order to do that, you have a couple options. You can run just a generic switch, which I did not want to do Try and get this to focus here for you. So this is actually a switch for a ATV and it's a winch control switch. So it does say out and in, even though it's not going out or in, but I just drilled that in and then I ran the wire through the arm and then down, down through here and back to the middle. Now the wiring, I've got to say, it's not the prettiest, but it does work. So. There's two of these solenoids, and these are winch solenoids because the switch acts in a way where it only feeds a positive connection, and then you're changing the polarity, and that's how this works. This solenoid is what allows you to do all of this, and you can wire those two connections from the actuator back down here to the solenoid, and that will do all your switching. Um, and then you can run your heavier gauge wire from the solenoid to the battery or to the terminals here and you don't have to worry about trying to run it through a small switch some people do it through a small switch but i didn't feel comfortable with that there's a lot of current going through these i think i peak when i'm running the uprights it will take almost well anywhere between 40 and 60 amps of power so or of current so i wanted to make sure that that was heavy duty um that's probably one of the trickiest parts maybe of this whole thing was wiring those in just because there's a lot going on. Um, but again, not, not terrible. So there's a signal wire here on the bottom, this green and the black down here, which I don't know if it's too visible, but there's a green and black wire on the side with the spade connectors. And those are actually the signals to trigger this solenoid and there's one for the upright and then there's another one on this side for the um, dump bucket so that's really all the connections i had to make i did add a voltmeter and amp meter here so i can monitor and see what's going on um, I can get this to focus for you so I can see the voltage and I can see the current so if I go with the upright or going down you can see it draws quite a bit of power now that's something that is kind of an issue you probably if you're going to build one of these you probably will want to upgrade your battery the battery it does take its toll on the battery so my solution to that was to actually install an alternator which you can kind of see down there I'll get down here and show you. So there's the alternator. It is running off of the PTO on the back. And let me lighten this up for you. So it's not too difficult. It, it's more of a pain in the butt just with the brackets and everything. But it does work and it keeps my battery charged so I can do a lot longer runs with this. Now, like I said, you could get away without that if you were to just get a bigger, maybe a marine style battery that can handle the deep cycles on it um, but these little lawnmower batteries do struggle a little bit um, 
my suggestion would be to always have it running, the engine running so it's charging the battery, but even so, it still can draw the battery down a little bit. Um, I think that's most of what I had to do. Now, I did upgrade the tires because the tires were turf tires. I bought brand new turf tires, but found out quite quickly that they do slip quite a bit if the grass is just a hair wet. Um, I upgraded the front wheels and tires here. So these are now no flat, they're solid, solid tires up front. So I don't have to worry about those guys. And that's a majority of what I need to show you, I think. Um, the only other thing is, so this bucket weighs 100 and 30 pounds roughly. The steel, I don't know how much it weighs. It's probably another, let's just say 60 pounds. Those actuators are another probably 20 pounds each. Um, so it, it added a lot of weight up front. Now I had to counter that somehow. So I came up with this bracket on the back. Now this bracket bolts on to where the hitch would typically go. And it's just a six by six plate with a piece of the scrap from the frame, from making that frame, um, welded to the bottom. And then I used a piece of pipe welded to that plate coming up so I could actually stack these. Um, these are home gym weights. And these weights, I have two boxes full of these. And I think this is, uh, off the top of my head, I think I have about 60 pounds there, maybe 80 pounds of counterbalance weight on the back. So that makes a big difference with the traction. Um, otherwise, you really don't have that much weight on the back here, and it does want to just spin the tires. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I know it's kind of long at this point, but I did want to give a more thorough walk around. Um, this system is completely feasible. If you have a mower and you still want to keep it as a mower, um, you could definitely install all of this with keeping the deck. Um, the biggest issue, like I said, is going to be the battery. Now you could overcome that as well as you could add your second battery to the back and then use it as a counterweight as well as then you don't have to worry about the mower not running. Um, there's several ways you could do it. But in my case, I didn't really care. This really is now a mini skid steer for us. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I've helped you. Um, feel free to leave some comments down below if you've got any questions. I will be more than happy to help you guys if you are trying to do something like this. Anyways, thank you for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.